Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. Opened temple. Not uh, too exciting. Do have a couple decent uncommons, the Celebrant and the Chimera. And then at common, I've got some good ones too. Daybreak Chimera, Hierophant, Voracious Typhon. So those are kind of the cards I'm looking at. Celebrant is decent, but I think I would rate it a little bit below all these other cards. Mischievous Chimera is a uh, Pretty decent, but the blue-red deck doesn't come together very often. So don't love first picking a blue-red card. And then between Typhon, Hierophant and Daybreak Chimera. It's pretty close, all these cards are good. But I would probably have to give it to the Voracious Typhon. We'll go with the Typhon. Second pick, well... There's some pretty good cards here. The Shimmerwing Chimera. Anax and Dreadful Apathy are the three cards that stand out the most. So it's probably going to be one of those. There's no real great synergy with Typhon and any of these cards. Of course, Anax cares about four power a little bit. So if we do end up red-green, Anax plus Typhon could be a good combo. Apathy is just a great removal spell. Chimera does need a little bit of synergy to be amazing, but it's definitely the card with the highest upside of all these uh, three cards if it comes together. But I'm not the biggest fan of blue-green necessarily, so it wouldn't be an amazing pick alongside Typhon for my tastes. All right, that's a close one. 27 votes for Annex, 25 for Shimmerwing. All right, we'll give Annex a try here. And now a third pick. There's some good red cards, Omen and Heroes of the Revel. Could be decent pickups. There's also Slaughter Priest if we want to abandon Typhon and potentially pivot into Red Black. Had we taken Shimmerwing, this pack would have been pretty disappointing. Could have just ended up taking Omen anyway, just as kind of a good card in a blue red deck. If we had taken Apathy, then this would have been a pretty awkward pack as well. So far, the Annex pick is looking a little bit better. So between Heroes and Omen. I think that's kind of what I'm looking at. So I don't think we're going to struggle to pick up more random four-powered creatures later between the Minotaur and various green creatures. So I think I'm leaning Omen. But uh, it's definitely close. And yeah, there's a War Leader, for instance, which is not too much worse than the heroes. In some decks, you would even prefer the War Leader. Do have another omen we could take. There's a Tessin training, amulets if we want to maybe splash. So far, I think I would rather stick to red since that seems more open than any other color. We first picked the Typhon, so it does, doesn't necessarily mean we should be green. Although training is a card that would be quite good. Although the problem is that the bots just don't really prioritize training, so it's kind of normal to see it late. So I'm just going to take another Omen, same reasoning as last pack. Those 4-5 Minotaurs tend to go pretty late. And now we've got a decision. There's Loathsome Chimera, which would be a great pickup for a red-green deck. But there's also Dreadful Apathy. So if I take Apathy, I could potentially pivot into red-white, which is also a color combination that doesn't come together all that often, on Arena at least, since you kind of need those heroes and synergies with the heroes which uh, doesn't always work out, but fifth pick Apathy could be a signal that white is open. So that's what we have to consider too. Uh, we'll go with the Chimera and hope that red-green works out. No amazing cards for us here. Uh, Aspect can be a decent trick, but it does require us to be ahead on board, which isn't always the case. Tower Scout is kind of mediocre since it doesn't really help with the 4 power theme. Could just take an amulet here. In case we end up splashing. Uh, Gift of Strength, Infuriate, two cheap combo tricks. There's Oriant which can help us discard extra lands in the late game. 
Don't have any two drop creatures yet, so that's also important that we shore that up. A card like the Nessian Horn Beetle would be amazing. Oriad also adds some red devotion for Annex, which could be important. The extra toughness from Gift could also come up. Uh, sometimes we end up being weak to flyers, so the reach could be nice too. Eh, we'll take the Oriad. But people do like Gift over Infuriate. This pick doesn't matter. Um, best card overall, probably the Soul Reaper. Sea Guard, maybe. Still a chance we pivot into red black, so I'll take a Soul Reaper. Wow, we wield the Chimera out of the first pack. I mean, Thrill's pretty decent too. Some cheap card selections, never bad. And can help me with Escape. So I think I'm leaning Thrill over Aspect and Chimera still. Even though there's a small chance we could end up uh, blue red. Now I'll take the War Leader. And I doubt any of these are going to get played. Maybe Temple Thief if we end up red black. And another War Leader, so yeah, these go pretty late, so don't really need it to prioritize them. So with the packs we were handed, I guess I'm pretty happy with where we ended up. For the time being. So going into the second pack, we're definitely red. But we could still potentially change our second color based on what we open. Well, it's a little awkward. Uro is a pretty powerful card. But it is double green, double blue to escape. There is a Furious Rise, which would be an amazing card in our deck. There's a Karyatid, Celebrants, so there's some good cards in red-green. Yeah, I don't think Uro is feasible, so I'm probably just taking the Furious Rise. Rise can wheel, but I don't think I want to risk it, since with uh, Annex and Double War Leader, I think it would be quite good in red, and especially red-green with Chimera and Typhon too. So I think I don't want to risk not tabling the Furious Rise, even though... The bots do tend to be pretty generous with it. And then hopefully one of Celebrant and Carrotted Wheels, but I don't really count on it. Alright, gotta be the Warbriar Blessing here. In green, there's no red card I want. Next best card, like Witness, Pegasus are both decent. Haven could give us some ramp in green. But probably still go with Blessing with all these big beefy creatures that can fight well. Ooh, wow, third pick a Crone War. That's a gift. And then fourth pick probably takes Stampede Rider. Could be quite decent in this deck. Take our first return to nature or we could look at the Shimmerwing. We do have Double Omen and Warbriar Blessing, which are all pretty good with the camera, and we do have an amulet for fixing. One amulet is not going to be enough, but if we pick up a Karyatid or another amulet, then Chimera could be worthwhile. Otherwise I think it would take Return to Nature. I'll take the Chimera, the upside's definitely there if it uh, comes together. And yeah, there's another amulet which I'll take. Portent is kind of nice with uh, two war leaders, but the two war leaders are already quite good with the Akron War, so it's not like we need to play bad Act of Treasons when we have a good one. Um, another Oriad could be serviceable. Could splash a Thirst for Meaning, but I'm a lot less interested in splashing this than the Shimmerwing. Probably just take the Oriad since we're pretty light on two mana creatures. Would much prefer like a Rage Hound or a more aggressive uh, two drop. Now probably leaning Sitas and Training, not the type of deck that wants the Nexus Wardens. Pursuits, I mean, could be okay. We've got a couple escape cards, Chimera and Typhon. But uh, Training's pretty serviceable too. And then now I could consider Wardens, could take Mantle, 
on the off chance that we, I don't know, end up with uh, Utropia and we want to splash Mantle too. What are the chances that we play Nexus Wardens? Pretty low. And don't really want the altar for fixing. Nothing here that I want. So yeah, at this point, still a tiny, tiny chance I could not be red green. Just trying to think, like, let's say we open a Croxa, would I switch into red black? Is there any blue card I would open that would make me switch into blue reds? Probably not. Maybe like a Nadir Kraken. At least it's an uncommon for the vault. Might play an Aspect. Don't really want the third Oriad. Maybe we'll play the Nyxborn Brute, but I doubt it. Alright, so I mean, red was pretty open and got rewarded with a third pick, a Crone War. But the deck definitely needs some help to kind of make sure we have a functional curve. Need some two mana creatures. And then not sure yet what the situation is going to be for this Shimmerwing on the splash. Got a lot of combat tricks, but a bit light on creatures. Well then, Nightmare Shepherd's a powerful card, but Warden of the Chain is still quite good, so... I think we'll probably just stick to red-green. Second Furious Rise. Do have to be careful that we don't end up decking ourselves with double Furious Rise. But I think I'm down. Can probably wheel Forerunner. There's also Acolyte I could splash, but... Don't think I want to risk not tabling the Furious Rise. And then Arosa's Blessing is great, but so is the Rage Hound, since we're definitely lacking in the two drop department. So this is a tough one. The Blessing would also be nice with the Chimera if we still want to make that happen. But I don't know if that's necessary. Probably still take the removal spell. But yeah, I would love to pick up another 2-mana creature. The Manticore is pretty good too, as a 4-powered creature for 3-mana. I don't have many instants, so the ability is not super relevant. Although it does work well with Omen of the Forge, so that's still something. Yeah, I think I'm leaning Manticore over Grove Dancer, which is like... It is a 2-drop, and I do want 2-drops. But it's nothing special. If this was like the Horn Beetle, I would definitely take the Horn Beetle. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna end up splashing the Chimera. But a Dream Shaper Shaman could be a nice one. Especially with all those Omens of the Forge that we can easily sacrifice. A Tessin Training, Blessing. Don't think I'm gonna play two of them. Probably not going to play two heroes, but definitely not going to play two shamans. And then I'll probably take the Oriads again, just mono Oriads. Just to have more creatures. I mean, Thrill I think would be the better card when we already have two Oriads. Omen of the Hunt for Ramp doesn't seem super needed since kind of the if you look at the curve, we just have this entire mess of 3-drops, so this doesn't really ramp me into anything useful. Like, playing a 5-drop on turn 4 is okay, but we don't have much beyond that. So I don't think Omen helps me much. But Omen would be good if we wanted to splash Chimera, but I don't think it's going to be necessary at the end of the day. I think our, our deck is powerful enough, just red-green, especially with double Furious Rise now for card draw. Maybe I'll play the wings. Alright, so nothing too impressive left in the packs. So at the end of the day, maybe blue-red was the most open color pair. But, yeah, still got some pretty good green cards. 
So I'm not too upset. Alright, so how do we want to build this? Don't think chimeras need it. Then in terms of interaction... Not gonna play both bomb spells. Not sure about the wings. Hero is potentially cuttable. The Brute is cuttable. This is 43 cards. Don't love the aspects. Since we're not super aggressive. Yeah, I think playing 17 lands is fine. We've got double Furious Rise to draw more cards. Shaman's a good mana sink. We've got Oriads to discard lands, so this deck doesn't really flood all that often. Thrill is still okay. It's not super needed, but does give me something to play at instant speed for the Manticore. Another way of discarding lands. Like I could even play 18 lands and then just discard lands when I don't need them. As opposed to having to draw towards lands if I need them. Uh, wings would be a good way to end the game if we're like going off with Furious Rise and struggling to kill the opponents. Between the two pump spells, I think I'm leaning Gift of Strength over Infuriate, just to give us more game against flying creatures. And then Hero of the Games doesn't seem super needed. Got a couple synergies with it, but nothing amazing. The Brute is just like a random big creature. It is good with the wings if we decide to play that. But it's not a great blocker. Total creature count is 13 at the moment, including the Brute, so... Definitely don't want to cut too many more creatures. But we do have a couple cantrips too, with the Training and the Thrill. Rice finds more cards, so we do get to see a lot of cards in this deck. Yeah, maybe cut the Thrill. And then keep Brutes to combo with the Wings of Hubris. This could also be a deck where Triumph of Anax is decent, but I'm still not a huge fan of it, because the opponent can kind of see it coming. Alright, I guess I can give this a shot. Would also not be opposed to playing 18 lands, but guess we can try 17, see how this plays out, and potentially go back and add an 18th. More mountains than forests, could even be 10-7 to be honest. We're pretty light on green cards. Most of these we're not going to play early. So it's just like a Warden and a Chimera on 3. And then double green for Typhon I guess is the main constraining factor. Could also play an Amulet just for the fixing to get double green. And it is still like okay to draw later with the Shaman. So maybe I can play 17 lands plus Amulets. And then Amulet can also fix for double green, double red. Don't have much double reds outside of Annex, so maybe 9 8 in favor of Mountain is okay. The Amulet would also be useful at filling the graveyard for escape, but I just have the two escape cards, so it's not too much there. Yeah, let's try 9 8. Pretty nice hands, got the Chimera to enable Furious Rise. Omen has cheap interaction. It's the red green mirror. Yeah, let's just get that out of here. Playing Chimera with Manticore in place is kind of sketchy. So I can play Stampede Rider, maybe next turn fight it with Blessing. Alright. Opponents on the same game plan. Finds their own Blessing. Yeah, definitely gotta fight this Manticore. Yeah, I mean, I could also keep up Gift of Strength, and if they fight, I Gift of Strength in response. But that's also asking for trouble.
So let's see, when Warbriar Blessing enters the battlefield, Enchanted Creature finds up to one target creature you don't control. So they already chose to fight, is what I'm getting. I'm a little confused. It's up to one, so they could have declined to fight, but once they targeted, they were kind of locked in. But I'll take it. Opponent's gonna escape. Good trades. Opponent won't be able to escape this again anytime soon. But if they kill my Chimera then... I won't have a 4 power creature for Rise or Rider. I think we just send Ryder for now. War leader's not bad. So no need to sack Omen. So now I'm probably fine sending everyone, hoping they don't have any two-man interaction. And play War Leader. Don't think there's a reason to play anything pre-combat. Looks like they have their own Gift of Strength or Infuriates. Sure. Alright, Shaman could be nice. Can sack that Omen of the Forge for value. Uh-oh, Nassim Boar. Could be bad news. So, do I have to scry with Omen? If I find a Kroon War, would be pretty good. If I just, let's say... Play the Shaman and pass. What happens? Opponent attacks. They get to... Basically eat my entire board. I get to draw three. I mean, I'm not, like, super dead, but it's not great for me. If I sack Omen, then I wouldn't be able to play Shaman anymore, so... I think I will just take my draw step. And then just uh, play Shaman and pass. Probably could have kept up green mana, but I don't think we have any combo tricks for green mana left. I could draw after the board triggers. But we do have Omen of the Forge that we could have drawn. Sure. So we're going to take 7, and we're forced to block with everyone. So get to draw 3 cards. There's Omen. Doesn't really kill anything. Ah, wow. Opponent's got the Wombo Combo. Aspect plus Nassim board is brutal. If Omen goes face, let's see, Manticore... 
could be one extra damage. Is there any way we can burn them out somehow? Yeah, I guess that happens. Don't think there's reason for me to omen end of turn. Not a rise. Yeah, the return to nature makes everything way more complicated. Otherwise, we could potentially take out the boar. I guess the play might just be escape and then... I get to block the Nessian boar and use Omen to finish it off. And I guess I might as well play this. And then I'm going to take another beating from the Revelers and Renata. I think they're doing me a favor by killing the Furious Rise, since I might end up decking with double Furious Rise and all these Nassian board triggers. It's pretty good too. Alright, let's try and stabilize this board somehow. Man, Annex plus Renata is also brutal. So... 6, 10 mana total. Could go Annex Oriad, Chimera, 3 blockers. Technically not dead on board. I mean, I do want to get those tokens, but the one ones don't do much on this board. Final flare, yeah, that should do it. Two blockers, block, block, take six. Jeez. Well, that Nessian Boar plus uh, Aspect of Manticore was pretty brutal. Looked like we were in fine shape before that happened. Fine hands, and we'll need to find another creature eventually. I guess we'll Stampede Rider into Warden. And Mogus' favor, Lampad. Sure. And we're attacking. Fair enough. I'm wondering if I should still equip the Rider anyway, or if I should equip the Warden. 
probably the rider. One with the stars. Sure. It's pretty good removal since it doesn't have any abilities. So we'll take five. Typhon's not bad. I think I'm okay playing Typhon and attacking. For opponents holding Grey Merchants, I might regret it. Going into this kind of racing situation, but we do have some good removal, which uh, should swing the race back in our favor. Final death would be kind of the worst case here. Yep, it's unfortunate. Take five. And I've got the same decision once again. Do I play the creature? Do I stay back? Or do I use removal? It is tempting to kill Lampad while the opponent stepped out. But it is not very efficient. I guess I could sag the omen too. And then does the rider stay back? I guess so, we're a little bit behind in the race. It's a close call with just playing war leader and still attacking since they might be out of removal at this point. It's just if they have like a grey merchant I could get drained out. Femia would have been scary. And yeah, the camera also dies to the Mogus' favor, so... I'll keep a world leader, I guess. There does appear to be an instance. Probably hang back still. Could be a mantle in their hands. Which I have to be careful with, with the Arosa's Blessing. I feel like if they had this missile, they might have made a move end of turn to put me to two. Or, well, I would have just been dead to the Mogus' favor, so it's definitely not this missile. So we're just going to kind of set up our defenses and then hopefully get some card advantage going with the Furious Rise. Intervention, counter, and tap something down. So they're debating what they want to tap down considering the Harrowfans could trade for the Rider. So maybe they want to force us to trade for the War Leader by tapping down the Rider instead, but they do tap down the war leader eventually. Alright. So that could have been the card they were holding since they kept up double blue. Yeah, I think I'll trade. Another one. Gift of Strength. Alright, do we just Blessing and hope they don't have Mantle? I think so. And then I can probably attack for five and take two on the way back. So I do want a Blessing pre-combats. I 
Uh oh. No, no mantle. Alright, turtle to tap down war leader, fair enough. Annex is nice. Let's see if that resolves first. Although I guess if they countered it, they would have tapped down War Leader too. So get in for five. I'm thinking whether I need to gift the strength now already to maybe set up lethal next turn with the War Leader's ability. So if I hit for eight, put them to six, then next turn I could just sack Warden to the War Leader and they would be dead. Potent passes. Now they could have an instant to tap down my war leader. I think I just move to combat right away instead of getting something countered and ha them having my war leader tapped with a lionfish. And we'll take it from there. Does annex attack? All right. Well, that was a close one. Opponent had a very aggressive start. Final death definitely put us on the back foot, but uh, the war leaders got it done. Nice opening hands. Omen into Sack Omen or play Furious Rise into Typhon. I'll say it can definitely be worthy of an Omen of the Forge, Black Whites. Temple Thief. Might just kill the Temple Thief. It's definitely close with I'll say because Typhon technically kills Temple Thief, but Black White can have a number of removal spells and then I don't want to be taking as much damage since we don't have any other cheap plays we can make. Do it now in case of any shenanigans or in case they want to sack the Alsaid. So playing the Furious Rise now does have its advantages because if we exile something when we play Typhon I can play it on turn 5 and I don't have any 5 mana plays. So it's probably worthwhile. And then keeping Omen in play for Shaman could also be good. It's a lot of lands. Hopefully we can find like a war leader we can play next turn. So can trade off for the Alsid, sadly. Probably keep Typhon around to maybe sack to the Shaman at some points. Omen gets back Temple Thief. Alright. Chimera is a good draw. Make sure to keep up red mana in case we exile Omen with the rice. Perfect. Maybe should have put a stop on my own end step.
I'll happily trade off Chimera for Glory Bearers. Do I want to omen something first? Probably kill the Thief. And then if they want to sack Alsate to protect Glory Bearers, that's fine. If I omen the Alsate right now, they would sack it, giving Pro Green on Glory Bearers, presumably. And then I can trade off. But I could trade for the Thief still. Hmm, interesting spot. I think I like killing Thief. That happens. And next turn I can play Shaman. Opponents on empty. So don't hit my spots. Ooh, hoplites. That was not great for me, but we're still maybe okay. So, play the forests. I have seven mana, so three I want to spend on shaman ideally. Where do I want to put the training? I'm definitely going to prioritize sacking omens. Probably put training on the Oriad itself. Blessing. Do I need to fight anything? Not really. Can just use a shaman here. And then Arosa's Blessing is not bad. Put that on the Typhon, so we have another good blocker. And take out the Glory Bears. Alright, so we've got three good blockers at 13. Opponents on empty. Don't hate my spots. Got plenty of draw engines going between the Shaman and the Furious Rise too. So get our maximum Furious Rise value. I do eventually need to win the game too, but it's not the priority right now. Don't need to use Blessing. Can also start looting away lands with Oriad, but I'm gonna spend three on Dream Shaper again. And then I get to keep up my uh, Gift of Strength too. Get a free war leader, another one awaiting in exile. Sixteen cards remaining. Tempted to just uh, again sack probably the Arosa's blessing now. And wait to attack until I want to make a very big attack. Which will happen soon. Wings is also pretty good. And I'm not going to risk decking since I can always sack the Furious Rise itself to the Shaman. Get a Warden of the Chains. Just got to watch out for... Something that would pump all the opponent's creatures. Final death finally gets rid of the shaman. I can sack it so it doesn't get exiled, which can be relevant for escape. So 
So, play the wings. And then... How do we want to attack? I guess put wings on Stampede Rider. And attack with all the beefy dudes. And even if they draw an Anthem effects, we should be safe. Yeah, I'm willing to sacrifice Typhon for the greater good. So can we kill them? Let's say I put the wings on Chimera, that's five. I mean, if they're not dead, they're pretty much dead. Alright, sweet. The Dream Shaper Shaman definitely did a ton of work that game. Yeah, final boss time. Sure, no double green could be an issue, but... What was I saying? Alright, well a 3-2, first strike, pretty hard to deal with. Well, if we can keep drawing like this, we have a good chance. Do I want to chump now? I guess I can wait. It's pretty good. Yeah, let's just kill it now, maybe. It's just that if they put more enchantments on it, I might lose my opportunity to kill it. And how much better is Omen gonna get? Could save it to put it on Typhon, but probably fine to just put it on Oriads. All right. Of 
We've got gifts to potentially deal with a big flyer. Yes, yeah, second Morphosis. Could have been a reason to play Typhon first anyway, so we could use a War Leader to kind of sacrifice all these enchanted creatures. Sadly, one mana short of Chimera plus Furious Rise. This is probably okay. Could also attack and then use Gift of Strength if they block, but I think I would rather use Gift to maybe deal with a flying creature. Yeah, our opponent's playing uh, Fish Tribal here. And there's a flyer. Could get suited up with the Sentinel's Eyes next turn. Ooh, a Crone War. It's pretty nice. Now, of course, they could Mirror Shield as well. So then it's going to go up to 4, 5 toughness. But Gift is still enough to kill it. But then I won't be able to steal it with the Crone War. But... Forcing them to attack, still pretty good, although I guess it wouldn't kill itself with the third chapter. I'd probably just Furious Rise and keep up Gifts. So gonna move the shields. All right, this gift is going to be pretty important. All right, so now the board's pretty manageable. Probably play this Brutes. No real reason to keep up rats, but I guess I'll do it anyway. Should have attacked first, but I was going to play Brute no matter what. Got our card draw engine online. Dealt with the opponent's card draw engine. Well, definitely happy we included uh, Gift of Strength over the uh, Otter Pump spell Infuriate, since the Reach definitely came in handy. So I don't think I attack with Brutes. Play War Leader and pass. And then next turn I can maybe make a big attack. That's great too. Alright, that should kind of seal the deal. Even if they somehow have a Dream Trawler, they're empty-handed so they can't give it a Hexproof right away. It's probably the worst case scenario. I guess Shatter the Sky would be bad too. Banishing Light is manageable. I could sack it to the War Leader here, put an extra card in Graveyard for escape. I don't think I have any disenchants in my deck. But, yeah. Alright, so now what? I want to use a Blessing. They're going to block Typhon, since we could double pump 4 leader. Take 6, play Chimera and Oriads. Hope they don't have a Sweeper.
So they identify a Crone War. Uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I don't even think I need uh, the forest. Yeah, opponent's dead. All right, sweet. Well, bit of a strange final boss, but to be honest, if we didn't have that uh, gift of strength, then they would have kind of gone off with the staggering insights on the flying creature with hexproof. So yeah, pretty mediocre gruel deck got the job done. Double furious rise definitely did a lot of work. Dream shaper shaman too. Crack some packs. All right, sweet. Want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.